Folks, last night I lost my wife at Ridge Hospital. My wife checked in at the hospital Sunday evening. She had been due for surgery Monday morning, and we agreed that I'd return to the hospital in the afternoon when she would have returned from the theater. Fast forward, uh, it gets to a point where it says, my wife died at 11 p.m. last night, three hours after I left her. A lady in the ward told me she had collapsed and died just like that. This was posted on June 25th at 11.32 p.m. This was last week Thursday by Professor Emmanuel Kuto, and he was just telling the world uh, what he had experienced with his wife and, you know, health professionals at the Ridge Hospital. It got everyone talking and everybody wondered what exactly is going on because this will not be the first time that we've had a narration this similar. I remember just about a, a few months ago, actually, there was a man who also um, narrated how his wife died in the hands of some doctors at this same hospital. And it got everyone enraged. Today we're talking about it. And so this is still TV3 New Day. You are welcome. We have uh, the man who put this out, the man who unfortunately lost his wife. And it's amazing that he's even able to uh, grant interviews at this time because he is mourning uh, the death of his wife. Professor, well, Dr. Emmanuel Kuto joins us in the studio. And uh, we also have on Zoom lawyer, Justice Abdullahi Amir. We want to tackle this um, from the legal angle as well. So welcome, lawyer. And doctor, good morning. Good morning, madam. And thank you for joining us. My condolences, first of all. Thank you. This must be very difficult for you. It is, it is. This happened on Wednesday night. Yes, on Wednesday That's night. That's when your wife died. Yes, madam. you came out on Thursday. Yes. Okay. Tell me why you decided to come out and tell the story, first of all. Well, as I have said, I wasn't very keen on bringing it out. Mm. Uh, I'm a very private person, very reserved, so I shy away from the limelight. But after the event occurred, I sat at home and, and kind of go, go, went all over it again, and I realized that uh, this had to be told. It's a story that had to be told, not necessarily for me and my wife, but so that other people uh, uh, would not have to go through such a harrowing experience. Mm. So I had to make a choice, either to stay mute or to talk, and I, I opted to, to speak out. What has been the response since you spoke out? The response, I, I, I describe it as an avalanche. Uh, mm. the, it's been massive, uh, far beyond my wildest expectations. And uh, as I speak, my phone is currently ringing in my pocket, and mm. people, more and more people are calling. And uh, it, it was simply, it had been uh, overwhelming, overwhelming, so to speak, yeah. For people who may not necessarily know what happened, can we briefly just tell uh, what you wrote in your Facebook post? What really happened? Yeah, I have to tell you that uh, yesterday night, mm. the authorities of the Ridge Hospital and the Ghana Health Services have, they did reach out to me. We had okay. a lengthy conversation. And the meeting has been scheduled for tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, mm. at 10, 10 uh, a.m. In the meantime, my, my lawyers have advised me to be very circumspect in the wow. things I say okay. and, if possible, to refrain from making any pronouncement at all. Mm. So, I, I, additionally, I, I think that this matter has gone far beyond me personally. Yeah. Yeah. It's no longer even about my wife. It's mm -hmm. about so many people. Mm -hmm. So, I, I'd like to de de personalize, personalize it as much as possible okay. and make it, uh, I want to look at the institutional setup, uh, the failures that led to this uh, tragedy. Mm. So, yes, uh, what I wrote is uh, more or less accurate yeah. from my layman's view. view. Let's, let's be very okay. particular about that. Okay. I, I was speaking as a layman, not a, as an expert. Mm -hmm. So some of the things may not reflect the uh, empirical, if you like, uh, conclusions. Yeah. Um, for example, uh, when I said that the nurses were laughing... Were they really laughing? They, they were laughing, but not laughing at my wife. Okay. They were laughing at the, the doctors calling the other doctor, who apparently the nurses considered to be a bit arrogant. So they were enjoying him being scolded. Mm. But I thought that, given the gravity of the situation at that time, uh, there was no place for laughter, mm -hmm. especially as, as I was standing there right with them. So yeah. it was a huge act of indiscretion, and which shouldn't uh, have happened. And that was also... Uh, but that fits into the general institutional uh, breakdown that we, we, to which I attribute uh, this uh, uh, tragic um, uh, situation. 
Is this an explanation they gave you later that they weren't really laughing at the situation, yes, yes, but rather yeah, it was yeah, an explanation? Yeah. Um, one of the okay. nurses apparently had even uh, circulated a WhatsApp audio mm. explaining what happened, and I, I fully, I, I don't agree with all the things she said, but most of it uh, I share that they, they were not laughing at my wife. In fact, at the time they were laughing, we had left my, my wife's bed uh, ward. We were mm. in their lobby, mm -hmm. so they could not have been laughing at my wife. But, the, the, but, but there was no reason why they should be laughing at that, at that time, moment. given the gravity of the situation. It was frivolous, it was trivial, uh, it was trivia, and I thought I, I had to, but I don't blame them at all. It is the uh, general atmosphere uh, uh, at, at Rich Hospital. Quickly before I go to lawyer, before this happened to you, like you said, there had been uh, another accusation. We all read it online as well, of a man who lost his wife barely a year after getting married. Did you ever think that this was ever going to get to your doorstep. And before that, did you really um, agree that there were lapses in our health system? Well, look, this thing is like all uh, tragedies. You, you think that it happens to only other people. Yeah. You, don't, you never imagine it to happen to you, and even when it happens, well, it's not really close to you, it's far away, so you hear it, and uh, sometimes you sympathize, but you're not really into it, mm -hmm. until it touches you uh, really hard. Yeah. So I did hear about his situation, I listened to it for a while, but I wasn't engrossed in it because, uh, as I said, I didn't know him. Didn't know. And, and it's the reason that I want to take up this matter. Mm -hmm. That, look, don't wait until it comes to you before you feel it. Yeah. We, can, we should sympathize, we should mobilize, we should, stop, we should speak about it, and then maybe we will save more lives. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. So you are taking them on legally? I am not excluding that. Mm. But that is not my focus now. Okay. I am aware of the complexity and cost of pursuing legal cases in Ghana. Mm. And I'd rather uh, concentrate my time uh, taking care of my children now that I'm going to be both mother and father. Okay. I don't want to be caught in, in, in those things, preferably. But if, you have to do, if that's what you have to do in order to hold our medical staff accountable, I am willing to go down that, that way. Let me bring in uh, lawyer Amir because I, I want to understand what direction we should go with this, especially. Good morning, lawyer. Good morning. Bella. Good morning. Thank yeah. you for joining us. I was just trying to be sure if you could hear me. First of all, I'm sure that you have also come across this post uh, by Doctor here uh, about how he lost his wife at the Ridge Hospital. Indeed, I have seen the post. And pathetically, I, when I saw it, it came from a colleague lawyer. And mm. at that moment, my heart really started jumping because I mistakenly assumed that he was a person involved and in, uh, his wife was the one who had been um, through such, a, such an ordeal. Okay. But it later emerged that indeed um, it was someone else um, that, I mean, post that he was sharing with all of us. Mm. And of course, we were discussing it in, in line with uh, um, neg medical negligence, amongst other things. Um, I've had the occasion to be um, a resource person um, with um, medical practitioners in Ghana on some of these matters, and I have re-emphasized that the medical practice in Africa has evolved. Mm. Um, things have changed dramatically from the days where we used to, I mean, harass and pretend that we are uh, make we are doing. A patient's um, a favor yeah, by treating yeah. them. I mean, yeah. things are no longer the case. Um, and so um, it, it, it is better for all health centers to be really up and doing and be checking the conduct of their, of their, of their professionals vis-a-vis -vis the patients and indeed all persons who patronize their services. Because these days, things are no longer the way they used to be, mm. particularly when you are in, in a century where we are, um, we are um, diaspora returning to Ghana in the name of um, tourism and other things. Yeah. People will take you on if you misconduct yourself. Mm -hmm. Negligence, indeed, there have been several researches that I have also shared, um, which were conducted by a medical student and a medical doctor, one um, Osu, Richard Osu, um, Osu Nyako. Mm. Um, and he did extensive work um, on this subject matter across West Africa. Indeed, um, maybe some of us who may be interested in reading about it, I think um, the, he, he termed it Lang um, Langorism theory, a okay. vehicle to medical negligence and malpractice in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. If you read this and you read the, the days um, in the 60s when the UK and the US started charging medical professionals with 
with negligence mm -hmm. and putting in place the appropriate measures to ensure that those who misconduct themselves in their discharge of their, of their services towards um, patients are taking on your licenses revoked and sometimes the compensations and and damages paid are so severe um we are we have we've come to that position in the past um from these worlds and here in ghana it is expected that we learn even faster and i i like i said saying earlier because of that um we are now doing a lot of education across the medical field okay to ensure that people are in line they practice in accordance with the order they sworn and do not pretend that patients appearing before them are people that they are doing favors to now regarding this particular issue that we have at hand mm. i was saddened mm. to feel that the lecturer is um, um is not willing to assert his rights as against um the the hospital really okay. um if people like that do for me, I mean, unfortunately what it means is that even those of us who do not have the resources and the intellectual capabilities to understand mm. um, the nuances of the of the medical field and how this affects our family and friends that we may not even be able to take them on at all and okay. we need a level of professionalism that would ensure that you and i get the best of them we pay money to access their services mm -hmm. it's a contractual obligation mm -hmm. between us and them second having come under their care they owe us a duty of care. They owe us a duty towards everything that they have sworn to do for us. Once we come to their hospitals, they, they are obliged to ensure that we receive the best, the best possible medical assistance that mm. they have to offer. Because importantly, beyond the fact that they have sworn to do this, they have also um, put out there that this is what they do for a living. They have the necessary qualifications yeah. to ensure that we receive the best of care. And so if you do not receive the necessary care, you should then take them on. you have every right to take them on. But he Indeed, says that he wants to focus on taking care of his kids. Let's understand that he's also mourning. This is fresh. He just lost his wife about a week ago. And so is it not a bit too much for him to now also proceed um, you know, to file a lawsuit against them. Should we not give him time to deal with, you know, his emotions at the moment? Well, he indeed has some amount of time, except that it's not unlimited. Mm. Remember, every patient, as I was saying, has, there's a charter in every hospital that every hospital ensures that it meets, it's us against the patients coming before him. And so, so long as these charters are flouted, um, and again, as health service indeed, um, it's, it's a signature to some of these uh, charters. And they, I, they, they have put these documents across for us to make sure that we receive the best of care. And so if the hospital or the, the professional there, sometimes the hospital may put in place the appropriate measures, but the professionals there may not discharge their duties in accordance with these charters. But that notwithstanding, if you even um, 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 accept the lecturer's explanation mm -hmm. that because he is now a mother and a father and so as a result he wouldn't want all the pressure and intention yeah. to he does not need that it will not happen if he has a lawyer um to represent him i mean he may have this matter go on for the next six months or thereabout mm -hmm. without having necessarily to even be involved in the media um, counter or anything involving the case okay everything will go on smoothly and silently without his personal involvement but but in this case uh, did you think from what you're saying does it mean that if he does not give the go-ahead, lawyers cannot come together to fight his case for him? Unfortunately, this is such that um, it must necessarily be um, the person involved, the victim or the, okay. direct, and the immediate family of the victim who can take them on. These are not constitutional matters that any Ghanaian can necessarily take it up okay. and okay. bring an action against the hospital. All right. Requires, because it's a personal injury, um, it is only those directly involved. I that see. Can take them up. All right. I mean, thank you so up. much, lawyer Justice Abdullahi Amir. Thank you. I know you have to rush to court, and so um, we're just taking very little of your time. You want to say something before you go? Yes, my name. I've seen that um, my name has an Amir attached to it. I wish I had the Amir as part of my name, but unfortunately. Okay, so it's just lawyer it's Justice Abdullahi. <laughs> that is so. Okay. Okay. Thank true. you. Thank you for that correction. <laughs> thank you, and I wish You're you the very welcome. best today. All right, so we're coming back to doctor in the studio. So he's saying that he would wish that 
um, you know, you'd still go ahead and proceed. Because if you don't give the go ahead, then lawyers cannot prosecute, prosecute on your behalf. Yeah. Is uh, this something you're considering? Yes, I can assure you that I have no intention of uh, uh, doing farmer nyami. Okay. Uh, I'm actively consulting. In fact, as of yesterday, a, a whole group of lawyers were at my home mm. and we were deliberating. People have called me from outside. I intend to demand full accountability on this matter, mm. except that I'm proceeding cautiously. I will, uh, the key thing is tomorrow's meeting with uh, Rich Hospital and the Ghana Health uh, yeah. Authorities. If they do come and they've assured me they are coming, mm. I'll listen to them with my lawyers. And I will know from there, uh, after the meeting, I'll put out a statement as to uh, the way forward, what we're going to do next. But it's not going to be another, uh, just another story that we'll talk about and let it go. No. Absolutely. It's going to be uh, meaningful so that nobody, Madam, the worst thing that can happen to a man mm -hmm. is to have to go home empty, empty handed and tell your kids after you've been to the hospital with your wife, your wife says, Mikwaba. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, they know you are coming back. And then you have to go back and tell them, I'm sorry, your, your mother is not coming back. back. I don't wish that on any man. How did your kids take this news? It was, it was, it was bad. So I'll do everything in my power that, so that things change at Ridge and in all our hospitals mm. so that we don't have to come back to this story again. It's enough is enough. Yeah. Enough absolutely is enough. And this is heartbreaking to say the least. Um, like he just said, having to break the news to his children must have been the most difficult thing to do. But again, he is not letting this go. Uh, I do have the report here, and, and Ridge Hospital says they are investigating. Also, like he says, uh, they've called on him to pay him a visit so they can start deliberations on this particular issue. So we're all waiting uh, to see what comes out of it. And if you're also going through a similar situation, just remember that the law must take its course. And so make sure that you get the right people to fight on your behalf. Moving forward, what message do you have for government? Because uh, for many months and many years now, we've been t complaining about the health sector and how deplorable, um, you know, the situation is. We've been asking, when are we getting more beds? I mean, when are we completing some of these buildings that are supposed to serve as health centers uh, for Ghanaians? We, we're paying tax and they're using our tax, tax for all these things. Why are we not benefiting as citizens of this country? What do you have to say to government? Yes, madam, um, I... When I got to Ridge Hospital on Sunday evening, uh, my, uh, my confidence level was boosted because when I looked at the infrastructure, the mm. facility, I thought, wow, this is good. Yeah. But then, now I can tell you that it's not just about infrastructure. Mm. So the government tends to think that just because you're pumping money into and building infrastructure, so we're doing well. Mm. Well, it, it won't serve much if the people who are, uh, if you like, running those infrastructure are not well trained, if they're mm. not supervised, Mm. If, it, if they are not held accountable, then all this investment goes down the drain. Yeah. And it, it is clear, our government is to do so much to raise the uh, standard of facilities in our hospitals, but the personnel, the personnel, the personnel must also be uh, trained. And, and um, I'm appealing to government to take a closer look at, uh, at what is happening, because what is happening, the amount of human suffering that is ensuing mm. is unacceptable. And eventually, it could come back, come back to hunt us all, including yeah. the, the government. So let us sit up and and, um, and do something about it. Absolutely. Yes, and madam. And she continue to rest in perfect peace. Thank you, madam. We pray for God to give you strength uh, for you and your family as you go through these trying times. And we seek justice. Uh, so thank you so much for speaking thank to us. Thank you for having me, Dr. Madam. Emmanuel Kuto is the director of the Institute of Languages. And he narrated how he lost his wife at the Ridge Hospital. Uh, an investigation has been launched into what may have led to her passing. Um, we, we await the results, and so we'll keep you updated. But thank you again, sir. And keep watching. This is still TV3 New Day.